three is approaching 700 arrests all throughout Standing Rock through the seven months that we stood there there were 850 arrests we are reaching a point of critical mass this fight has been going on for years and because of people like Tasha Martino because of our sisters and brothers our non-binary cousins at Camp McGeezy because of our brothers and sisters with Tara Hauska at GNU Collective because of Winona LaDuke at Honor the Earth because of Sasha Bolio at Red Lake Treaty Camp because every single body that is here today every person like Alex Golden Wolf who was brutalized by Pennington County Police I got a chance to meet Jake Spotted Wolf who just spoke a little bit earlier these are people who are laying their bodies on the line. These are people who know that we are in a state of emergency. They are joined by 700 others who have been compelled to put their bodies on the line. This is what it requires from all of us, my relatives. It is not an easy task. It is not an easy life. Our children are born into a state of impending doom. They know it in their hearts and their souls that the world is ending if we give in, if we give up, if we let the Army Corps of Engineers win, if we let Enbridge win. Every time we come together in numbers, we come together in power. It's no accident that a, a, a looks like an F-35 fighter jet flew over the gathering here at the United States Army Corps of Engineers. It's no accident that it looks like the Coast Guard is sending a ship right now to tell us to get off this bridge. Lock it! But this is our land. <laughs> we, are, we are on indigenous land, my relatives, and we have made space for our brothers and sisters who might have been called white, <laughs> who might identify as white, who have broken through the facade of whiteness and realize that race, just like religion, is a construct designed by human beings yeah. to, keep us, to keep us divided. My relatives, there's law enforcement approaching the bridge. Be careful, watch yourselves, ensure your safety. Everybody who's on the bridge, they're coming to remove the banner drop. Duluth police is on the scene. Uh, part, of our, part of our job, you know, as human beings, is to make sure that we can transmit or pass on a Mother Earth, an ecosystem that our children can make a living from. Just standing over by the police, under understanding how the colonization process has caused us to live in a very linear, gridlocked system in which capital and property ownership are protected over everything else. Capital, profit, property ownership is protected over human beings. It's protected over the four-legged rights that we have as their younger siblings. The human species, the two-legged being, is the youngest in the family of relatives. And, and we have gone woefully off course. But there are enough of us, if you, if you paid attention today, at Camp McGeezy, BIPOC individuals, LGBTQ+, queer, 
non-binary, gender fluid, however you want to look at it. They are opening the doors to indigenous peoples, to non-indigenous, those who see themselves as non-indigenous today, but who were indigenous centuries ago, maybe millennia ago. But they've identified themselves as white people. Just like we are not Indians, that is not a term that belongs to us. Just like black Americans are not black Americans. They're indigenous Africans who were brought to our hemisphere. We need to graduate from those differences, those categories that have been assigned to us. And so we see that happening here today. There are more allies here then there are indigenous peoples. Which means that we are succeeding, that we are growing a critical mass, which it will take to win this fight. Every single day, people wake up. Every single day is an opportunity to connect, to go within, and to express our inherent divine nature. This is also possible through ceremony and protecting the water, gathering in a circle, constructing teepees, burning cedar, protecting the water is part of our ceremony today. So that's when, when our relatives bring the drum, when they bring their voice, it consecrates the atmosphere. It, it allows us to commune with our ancestors, not just our human ancestors, but the gods who have given us authorization to express ourselves in this manner. So I just want to thank everybody who supports Camp Magizi, who supports Red Lake Treaty Camp, GNU Collective. Again, I always mention the petitions because if you're watching this stream or if you're able to catch this in some other platform, that's how you can support, that's how you can assist, is to inform yourself, share the content, share the streams, make sure that we can't be ignored. That, that's, that's the biggest message here today as we stand in front of the Army Corps of Engineers Duluth headquarters is that President Biden cannot afford to ignore us. I don't know what they're thinking, his team, his administration, the Secretary of the Army. I mean, you listen to our, our relatives at McGeezy, there's been three frack outs in the Mississippi River. <laughs> we are in a time of perilous drought. Five billion gallons of water have been sold to Enbridge for pennies on the dollar. Rivers are actually drying up in what is now called Minnesota. And our children are born into a state of climate emergency. They, they can't shake the impending doom, the existential metaphysical crisis that they didn't choose. They didn't choose to be born into that. But that is the world that they've inherited from us and from our progenitors. So it's our responsibility to stand up now and forever. It, it's my honor and privilege to be able to join McGeezy here today. McGeezy will fly. And shout out to everybody. There's more than 700 arrests here. So we'll continue to highlight line three. We'll continue to bring you anything that we have access to. We're here to support in any way we can. Those who carried on this struggle, the Anishinaabe people who have inherent rights and treaty rights to express themselves here. We are here to have their back. So, Lila Wopila Tanka Ichichapalo. We are out. <laughs>